Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next is the mollusks. Mollusks again have a relatively complex nervous system because as we are going up, the complexity is going to increase. So some mollusks do not exhibit cephalization, while while some others are highly cephalized. Now, if you look at the structure of mollusks, you can actually see a I mean, huge difference between the structure of different organisms in mollusks. For example, pila, uh, unio, chitin, octopus, they all fall under the uh, phylum mollusks. But if you look at their structures, they are so very different from each other. So if you look at this chitin and if you look at this octopus, they, they do not, uh, are, they are not much similar to each other. But still they fall under the same uh, phylum because of some of their functional similarities. So some of them are cephalized, that is they have all the nervous tissue forming towards one end of the body forming the head region, while others are not. Now, in most of them, two pairs of main nerve cords run throughout the length of the body. So, somewhat like this. Let us suppose, uh, say, something like this. A rough structure, actually. This is going to be. Uh, so, you can actually see a structure like this. So, where you can actually see this is the buccal region or the oral region. The next is the cerebral region and then comes the pedal region. So throughout the length of the body, you actually see two pairs of nerve cords running throughout the length. And these are the nerve cords. Ganglia are present as local control centers in important body parts. As I said, ganglia are present in the oral region, that is the buccal region. Then again, there are cerebral ganglia, which are present in the brain region. Again, you have the pedal ganglia, which are present towards the feet region. So in different regions, we have ganglia present, which act as local centers. That is this cerebral ganglia, which is present above the esophagus. So esophagus is present somewhere here. So the cerebral ganglia is present above the esophagus and the pedal ganglia is present below the esophagus. So pedal ganglia acts as the food. Right? And these ganglia which are present in important points of the body, they control those specific points. So like how the segmental ganglia used to control the movements of that particular segment. Similarly here, the ganglia which are present in important body parts, they control the movements of that particular part and that is why they are known as the local control centers. Specialized sensory organs or receptors are also present. Many of them have eyes as their photoreceptors like how you can see in case of octopus. Uh, sensor containing tentacles present to detect chemicals, vibrations and touch. So here you can see the tentacles which are present but again these sensory organs also differ in different mollusks because you do not see these tentacles being present in uh, Unio or Pila. So again that differs but yeah most of them have some or the other specialized sensory organs or receptors. The next one is the echinoderms. So under echinoderms comes sea urchins, starfish, feather stars. So they all come under echinoderms and, with more, and most of them have the radial symmetry. So what kind of nervous system do you have? Again, they have a simple radial nervous system because that is how their body structure is. So the nervous system also needs to be radial right, in order to reach the different parts of the body. So modified nerve net is present. You saw nerve net was present in one of the earlier class where it was present in the cylindrates. So here also nerve nets are present that is uh, which is formed by multiple small small nerve cells. And a central nerve ring is present from which nerves extend to each arm. So this central nerve ring, this is the central nerve ring which present and from this central nerve ring extends the different nerves for each arm. So for each arm there is one one nerve which is extending and due to this shape of the nervous system it is known as the radial nervous system. Specialized sensory organs are also present like some of them have simple eye spots for photoreceptors, some of them have tentacles like how you can see in this one, they have tentacle-like structures which are sensitive to touch. 
Some others have sensory cells in epidermis that is on their skin, on the surface of their body. They have sensory cells which are which can act as tango receptors or thermoreceptors or photoreceptors. So now let us talk about the vertebrates, the most advanced or the most complex animals. Now, till now you looked at all other groups and you saw that okay, everybody has some or the other mechanism to take care of the nervous system. So, so does the vertebrates have. Now, in vertebrates, they have highly complex nervous system and the important parts which make up the nervous system are brain, spinal cord and the peripheral nerves. So, all these parts together form the nervous system. And the most important thing to note here is that the brain is very much developed in case of vertebrates. So, we actually need to understand the structure of all these parts of the nervous system before we go ahead and study how the nervous system functions. Now, it is not possible for us to uh, study the nervous system of each and every vertebrates because even in vertebrates, you have so many different varieties of animals like fishes, you know, the amphibians, cats, dogs, birds, human beings. So, that, that's not quite possible to study about each of them in detail. So, what we do is we focus on the human nervous system system because human beings are considered to be one of the most complex animal of the vertebrates and also it will be easier for us to understand the processes taking place inside the human body so that will actually give us a fair idea about how it might happen in other vertebrates so that is why we will now study in detail the human nervous system now in vertebrates also the system is highly cephalized so if you look at any of these animals you can actually you can actually distinguish the head region which has got most of the sensory organs and also the nervous tissue so we can say that it is highly cephalized highly complex and specialized sense organs are present in all of them thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.